Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about resistance and what that means in a circuit. The objective of this lecture today is that you are going to learn about what's called Ohm's Law and be able to apply Ohm's Law to predict the resistance of an individual component within a circuit by completing a really simple calculation. It's a one-step equation, um, one simple division, and you'll be able to figure out, if you have some other factors, you'll be able to figure out resistance very easily. So. The first thing we're going to talk about is the bell, and this is kind of comes before the resistor. It's just one last thing that I didn't talk about. The bell tells us that there is some kind of a source of energy flowing through the circuit. It's similar to a bulb or an LED where it simply does its thing when there's electricity present, and when there's not electricity present, you're not going to have it uh, ringing on you. The bulb or the bell, sorry, looks something like this. It's an energy converter. It takes electrical energy, and it's going to convert it into sound energy. And what that'll look like in a circuit is something that looks like this. So this right here is the bell. And the bell, as I said, it's going to take that electrical energy, and it converts it into sound energy so we can hear it. And all we're doing is having it basically tell us that there is electricity present in that circuit. So, having said that, let's go ahead and start talking about resistance then. Resistance is the opposition to electrical flow. It is something that stops electrical flow from happening. Um, similar to if you've got a football field, and a football field on a football field you've got two different teams, and one team has the ball, and the other team is trying to stop the ball from moving forward. That trying to stop the ball from moving forward, you might say they are offering resistance. So resistance is the opposition to ele to the electrical flow of current. And what we typically have for resistance is something called a resistor. Every device provides some sort of resistance. The light bulb provides resistance. The bell provides resistance. Even the wire itself provides a little bit of resistance. But something that we use to control resistance is this guy right here, the resistor. And they come in all sorts of different shapes, sizes, and colors. But you'll notice there are these three bands right up here. And these colors are how we can tell how much resistance something has. That's something you might run into in the future. I'm not going to get into the color coding of resistors today, but I just kind of want to give you the heads up that the changes in the color bands changes the resistance. So what you're sometimes going to see for resistors is this circuit right here. In the United States, the most commonly used symbol, however, is this one right here. And if I'm drawing a circuit on the board, I will probably use the ladder symbol because that is how I've seen it always done in electrical diagrams. So this is just a resistor. So it's not necessarily a source of light like a bulb or an LED or the bell. What you're looking for is this squiggly line just says I've got resistance here. Now the resistance equation is simple. We're talking about voltage divided by current equals resistance. So once again, if I want to put this up, it's R equals V divided by I. R being resistance, V being voltage, and I being current. So voltage is always in volts, current is in amps as usual, resistance is in ohms. And once again, we've got this weird kind of upside down U looking thing. It's the Greek symbol omega, it means ohms. And so you can rearrange the equation in a couple of different ways. This one right here is if you are trying to seek voltage. This one right here, if you have no idea what the current is. Um, the one, however, you really need to memorize is this one right here in the box because the that one is kind of our base equation, and this is what we call Ohm's Law. So, in your notes, you should be able to have this table in there so that you can keep track of what the variables are and what the units are. Now, measuring resistance is really important because sometimes we don't know what the resistance is for that electrical light bulb that you put in there. We know it's drawing energy, we know it's causing resistance, but we don't know how much of it it is. So in order to do that, we're going to use Ohm's Law, and you should be able to graph this information. It's really not that hard to graph. It's a simple line graph, and it's going to help us out. What we're looking for right here is we have an ammeter. That's the circle with the A inside of it, and a voltmeter. 
That's the circle with the V inside of it. Now, I want you guys to recognize how these are hooked up. The voltmeter right here, this is in parallel to my random bulb right here, my thing that's causing resistance. The ammeter, on the other hand, this is clearly in series with the bulb. And it's important that you hook them up this way, otherwise you're not going to get the right results. So once again, recall, if we've got the ammeter and the voltmeter, we have to have the voltmeter in parallel, and the ammeter should be hooked up in series. So if we wind up graphing that information that you just got, you're going to get a simple line that looks like this, where the line indicates the amount of resistance that we have. So this line right here shows us resistance. And once again, resistance is measured using this funny Greek-looking symbol right here. Not just Greek-looking, it actually is Greek, and that's an ohm. O-H-M, ohm. So this is how we can measure resistance. The more current that I decide to, ha or the more current I push through this thing, the more voltage I push through this thing, the higher my resistance is going to be. If you want to think about it this way, this is the reason why when you have an electronic, especially the ones that we've been using in class, the more energy that you use, the more that I crank up that little knob on the front of the box, the hotter that wire starts to get, the hotter the electromagnet gets, because the more energy I try to put through something, the more resistance it winds up putting up, and that resistance creates heat. And yes, you should, should be able to copy this down into your notes. So what we start looking at now is a line that looks like this. The more uh, current we have, the more voltage we have, the more resistance we wind up getting. It's always a graph that is straight through the origin. And once again, we use this thing called Ohm's Law to find it. And you guys at this point should be very familiar with using Ohm's Law. I've had it on the last couple of slides. It's a simple, very simple equation that becomes really useful in a lot of situations. So if I increase one, I increase the other. That's the important thing to remember here. A couple of just kind of simple things you might wind up seeing inside of a circuit. We are really familiar with the filament lamp. We have used the filament lamp a number of times already. The symbol for that filament lamp that you're going to see is this right here, the circle with the X through it. At this point, that one's not a surprise. We've seen that one plenty. But, oops, sorry. The filament lamp uses energy kind of like this. Now the important thing to know about the filament lamp is that I can reverse the voltage and I can have it going in the opposite direction. I can put take the negative lead and put it where the positive lead used to be. I can switch them back and forth. It doesn't change whether the lamp is running or not. The lamp does not perfectly obey Ohm's law. Because you can see it's got kind of a curve here. It's not a straight relationship as we start really pushing the voltage to one direction, the, my current starts to taper off through the lamp. And that's what eventually what happens is your lamp just simply burns out. But on the flip side, a diode, kind of like that LED, you can see it's got this arrow here. The arrow indicates a direction. And the funny thing about diodes is they definitely don't obey Ohm's law. You get to a certain level of voltage and then your your current simply skyrockets. The other thing you need to know about diodes is that, once again, they are in a single direction. And if you try to put them in a reverse direction, they give you a very high resistance. Which basically means you can only hook these up in one way. And if you hook them up in the reverse, you're not going to get any light out of it. You're simply going to fry your diode. Um, as far as symbols are concerned, these two arrows right here coming off the diode, this means this thing is currently emitting light. So this is kind of like light energy right here. And it's emitting light. It's doing its thing. Thermistors. Thermistors change their resistance based on the temperature that something is at. So if I've got a hot temperature, my thermistor is very warm. What you're going to see is a straight line that looks like that. Nothing too complicated. But if I cool it down, all of a sudden it changes the curve. If I've got more voltage, so let's say I've got my voltage right here. At a cold temperature, I require very little current. But at a hot temperature, I've got a huge amount of current running through this thing. So the higher the temperature has a greater slope than the lower temperature, that one's pretty easy to see. 
Next one up, the light dependent resistor. This is exactly what it sounds like. It is light dependent. If I have light